does chat GPT actually think or is it just a stupid autocomplete? Well, I've created some queries that can help us test one of these theses. Now the queries that I've prepared for this test are not your typical give me information kind of queries. After all, even Alexa can give you answers if it can find the right Wikipedia article. So what we're going to ask here are questions that you probably cannot find on the internet specifically and would require some reasoning. So that's the real question is, can GPT look like or actually compute with a reasonable logic? So you can see that I have ChatGPT4 here as my option. So I have subscribed to the latest edition of this amazing chat robot. So recently I came across this strategy where you can ask ChatGPT to do something and the answer will not be just a simple lookup, but it makes you think. And so here's an example, how to stack, tell me how to stack these items on top of each other. A textbook about biology, eight eggs, a nail, and a box of tissues. So you can see that the nature of this query is not so much about can you recall information or can you complete a sentence but it would actually require some thought. And um, even a child could probably answer this question, but maybe an AI would have trouble. But look how well ChatGPT did it. So it says, put your textbook about biology on the bottom of the stack. It's likely to be the largest and most robust of the items, making it a best base. That certainly sounds like logical thought to me. Put the box of tissues next. It's relatively light, won't damage the book. It's flat. It's the next good base for the next one. So eggs, obviously eggs are a challenge and it knows that. So it says you can't just stack them on top of each other due to their size or shape and fragility. The best solution would be to place them in an egg carton. So put them in a container, keep them together, prevent them from rolling or breaking. I didn't say anything about rolling, breaking, but the AI knows the nature of eggs, obviously. And then finally the nail and you can place it on top of the eggs or their container. And of course it goes on to tell me more than I asked for. It says, be careful not to knock it over or cause any of the other items to break or fall. It's not recommended to leave them stacked like this for a long time. So this is almost like listening to your classroom teacher who gives you more advice than you asked for. So let's take this a step further. I'm going to invent some things that it's never heard of before. So I say, tell me how to stack these items on top of each other. Uh, hyperdolic glumsy, <laughs> eight uh, jenkles, uh, a torxine bot, and a box of glemishes. Uh, okay, so what in the world are you going to do with that? That's like nonsense, right? This is like jabberwocky stuff. And so, of course, it says, I, I don't think I can do this. These are not standard English. Uh, maybe uh, these are new terms. I'm not sure. So it obviously looked in its repertoire of vocabulary and says, don't have a clue. So let's ask the uh, bot to come up with some inventions. Uh, it, give me a definition for these words based on how they sound. This is kind of like uh, playing balderdash with your friends where you have no idea what the definitions are. And so here, this sounds fun. And let's see what it says these wacky words really mean. Okay, so here we go. So a hyperdolic glomzy sounds like it could be a type of geometrical object. Perhaps it is a multi-dimensional shape that is characterized by complex hyperbolic curves. It also might refer to an elaborate convoluted uh, concept or system in advanced theoretical physics. Man, I'd vote for that definition if you gave it to me. What are eight jenkles? Oh, they are small jewel-like objects, perhaps used as, as a currency in a fictional universe or as units of measure for a scientific context. Oh, wow, I like this, a torxine box. It is some kind of a robotic device. Uh, the Torx part might be about Torx screws. Good job. And so technically, it's about technological applications, maybe working on assembly lines or a handy gadget for DIY. Sounds like a piece of candy, possibly a shiny glowing appearance. A box of glemishes would be a delightful treat. Okay, so now that we know what these things are, let's see if it can stack them. So I'm going to say, put these items in a stack on top of my desk. <laughs> okay, so it says, I actually can't do that for you, but I can give you a recommendation. So let's say that we're going to go with this thing called the uh, hyperdolic glomzy. Uh, if it's a solid object, if you want to assume that, 
A box of Glemishes comes next. It's probably large. Uh, Jenkles are small jewels, so we'll put them on the next part. And then a, a, an intricate, delicate item is the Torxine bot, lastly. So its weight shouldn't be enough to crush it. So lots of assumptions. And so playing this game allows it to think logically. So obviously, can't find these answers on the internet. They've never existed before today. I uh, invented these words. And we're playing a philosophical or a hypothetical game, I guess you would call it. And it does a pretty good job. All right, so let's go on with this stacking uh, analogy. And I'm going to give it some things that are kind of hard to stack. So first of all, I'm going to say here's a treatise on Napoleon's philosophy of government. Hmm. A broken heart, three days of gloom, and a great idea. Make a stack of these. How would you best stack these up? So it assumes that the treatise on Napoleon is a physical book. Okay, it's a good base for your metaphorical stack. Place it on the bottom. A broken heart is an emotional state, can't be physically stacked. However, in this metaphorical context, we can think of placing this on top of the treatise, indicating that reading a book may have evoked some deep feelings or sadness. Oh my goodness, I couldn't have come up with that myself. This is, this is thinking now, right? Uh, three days of gloom is the next item on top. Uh, again, it's not physical, but it's an emotional or atmospheric state. So place this metaphorically on top of the broken heart. The, this suggested a period of sadness or introspection following the emotional response. Wow, we're getting deep. And then the great idea comes on the top, placed on, it might represent the outcome of this process. So perhaps reading the emotional response and the period of introspection led to a breakthrough or epiphany. Uh, wow, this is great. So we are now uh, analyzing things. This is not autocomplete anymore, right? Where it says uh, we are in love and we like each other so much that we finish each other's sandwiches, right? <laughs> I mean, it just didn't count, come up that way. This was a real thought process. One last test. I'm going to say substitute the objects with physical items that are a good representation of the concepts they represent. Okay, so here we go. We're going to put some symbolic thing that shows me what it is like in this abstract term. So the treatise doesn't need to be swapped out. It's a book. The next one's a broken heart. So let's take, uh, what do it says? A broken heart-shaped trinket or a heart-shaped picture with a crack on it. And then the days of gloom, we're going to use a small gray object like a stone or a piece of dark colored fabric. Rain or storm in a bottle would also represent this symbolizing the gloomy weather often associated with sadness. Place this on top of the broken heart, a quote, broken heart. And then lastly, the great idea, let's use a light bulb, of course, which is often used as a universal symbol for a new idea or a moment of inspiration. Play this carefully on top of your three days of gloom. Remember, this is a symbolic representation and the items you choose represent each concept can vary based on personal interpretation. So is this bot thinking? Is it reasoning? It's certainly not just doing an autocomplete. It is not just giving me hallucinations. This is a well-reasoned thought process. If I were to ask one of my students, please take these weird objects and uh, analyze which one should go at the bottom and which one should go at the top on my stack and give me a reason for your thought, they would probably write something similar. So have we arrived? Is this a general intelligent program? Obviously, it's a bunch of computer bits, but it's giving us logical thought. I never thought I would ever see a chatbot like this in my lifetime. Is it going to expand beyond this or is it kind of tapering off and we'll get incrementally better at doing this kind of thing? What's your thoughts? Where is this going to end?